Y como ustedes saben, es un amigo que ya ha estado con nosotros. Su nombre es Vidal Radonjic, es el CEO del grupo Beryl, uno de estos consultores que ayudan a los manejadores de fondos en la parte de lo que serían los fondos de cobertura. E indudablemente lo hemos traído hoy para que nos ayude a entender qué es lo que está pasando con la inteligencia artificial y cómo, fíjense bien lo interesante, muchas cosas de la inteligencia artificial estarían afectando el proceso de las inversiones de los inversionistas institucionales y que empieza a afectarnos a todos nosotros que tenemos nuestros portafolios de inversión. Le doy las gracias, Vida. Thank you for coming to el cierre de Wall Street. I'm very happy to have you back. And I think that the first question entering into the actual artificial intelligence uh, environment, uh, we would like to discuss with you what are probably those uh, real applications that you are seeing might have a benefit when the people are using what is called the LLM, large language model, into the investment manager. What are the ramifications of all those models when you are managing a portfolio? Thank you for coming, Vida. Hi, Victor. Thank you for having me on your show. Um, so, and thank you for the question. Topics like LLM, generative AI, and energetic AI uh, have been front and center at our annual Better Leads conference, actually. So, current application, as you mentioned, of LLM and AI in investment management specific, specifically. Uh, number one, uh, it's research and market intelligence. So, natural language processing, which stands for NLP, helps digest vast volumes of unstructured data, news, earning calls, filing social media. LLMs like GPT are used to summarize analyst reports, flag sentiment changes, or generate macroeconomic briefs. Number two, we have a portfolio management. AI-driven models help with factor modeling, that's volatility, momentum, liquidity, regime detection, uh, i.e. bull slash bear market transitions, and portfolio optimization. Then we have risk management as well um, that is applied uh, very effectively. So AI helps identify hidden correlations and stress test scenarios. It can read and summarize regulatory documents, which, is, which enhances uh, compliance risk assessments. That's very important. Um, another thing is client reporting and communication. LLMs are used to automate commentary on portfolio performance and markets. And then deal sourcing, finally, on private equity and VCs. Uh, AI scans the market for emerging startups, trends, or mergers and acquisition targets based on proprietary or third-party data. It helps ranks opportunities based on, let's say, growth, uh, intellectual property, teams, etc. When you mention all those tools about reading and regulatory things, about risk management and finding opportunities, isn't your perception uh, that the manager have now an edge and an ability to perform better or you're still seeing that no matter what you came with the capital market are very difficult to actually read and still have some managers that are not delivering that alpha that they mm -hmm. praise that's, they are that's looking that's for. absolutely uh, victor and entiendo todo uh, so real world examples before i proceed is blackrock one of the biggest public comp uh, publicly uh, traded uh, companies in for public markets it, they use aladdin It's an AI-powered risk and analytical platform across its investment teams. It integrates NLP, which I mentioned before, to process news, regulatory documents, and earnings calls. So obviously, it's, 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 it's amazing. Uh, they also use custom LLMs, large language models, to help analysts generate macroeconomic summaries and performance commentary. So another uh, real um, world example is Two Sigma. I, we just spoke to them in this morning. It's a quant hedge fund. 70 billion in AUM, where machine learning models drive much of the alpha generation. Alpha for your audience is excess return, how to actually beat the market. Uh, irrespectively, the market goes up and down. Uh, the two sigmas, they have invested heavily in alternative data as well, satellite imagery, credit card receipts to forecast economic events. And they had proprietary LLM already in 2009, back then. Bridgewater Associates, Uh, they focus also on building an AI system that can read and interpret macroeconomic data, similar to how Ray Dalio, a famous investor, uh, team is interpreting it. And then Citadel is, is kind of doing almost the same thing. So in terms of benefits, efficiency, uh, these tools automate time-consuming tasks like document review or initial due diligence, which is what we do, due diligence. Scale, they can monitor thousands of signals data points simultaneously. Customization, they enable personalized portfolio strategies or risk alert. 
and they have an edge in unstructured data, so they can parse, um, analyze alternative data, like satellite data, ESG disclosure, social media, et cetera, and speed, obviously. Uh, the limitations uh, is data quality issue. 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 Uh, AI is only as good as the data. Um, if data is not good, then you cannot get good answers. Uh, limited common sense. Uh, LLM can so-called hallucinate uh, or misinterpret nuances in complex documents and lack of interpretability. Many models, especially deep learning, are black boxes. So let me ask you something. Hold on, hold on. So do you think that with these tools, they has been delivering, again, better returns, the BlackRock, the Citadel, the uh, Bridgewater of the world? Or do you think that it's a non-event because obviously everybody's using those tools, but at the end of the day, market are wild, salvajes, mm -hmm. nadie controla el mercado, and yes. then it's the same old, same old. What is that in great, your opinion? Great, great question. Global macro managers as, 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 as a whole, they have underperformed. They have had the worst year-to-date performance on the record. They don't use much of these uh, techniques and tools that I just mentioned. Two Sigma, on the other hand, they're up 15%. So I think in this, in this environment where everything is driven by what's, what the, the administration is saying in some ways, um, having these tools is very, very uh, useful. However, it's very expensive to deploy them. So not everybody can have that. So, 